All right, Dan, we're back and we're going to talk about a vessel here. So, yeah, the word vessel, um, it uh, it has a little bit of a background meaning. It, when you look at the etymology of it out of the Greek, um, it means like body. It's synonymous with the word body. Uh, so when you're going into scripture, which is quite the, uh, you know, the research project, you can pick up the word uh, you can go to the King James Bible, uh, many sites online, they'll give you Bible verses uh, that use the word vessels. Uh, let's just go for a moment to 2 Timothy 2, uh, 19 to 21. So I'm just going to go into that for a moment. 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Okay. And it says, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So very unique that uh, we are, we were made from the earth. We're earthen vessels that God breathed in the breath of life. Prior to that, there was only, you know, a spiritual, purely spiritual, non-physical existence. Then God saw fit to make physical creation, a physical earth. Um, and therefore, uh, out of this loving act, we were a very unique creation made in his image, both male and female, uh, which would tell you that both male and female exist in God but then he made a physical image of, a, of himself. And therefore, in the creation account, he brought about something very unique. And this, uh, this creation that we are is able to feel, touch, taste, um, and have emotion and uh, existence that is different um, than what would be uh, from strictly an angelic or spiritual realm. And therefore, you can see why in the days of Noah, uh, it appeared that the sons of God, the angels, um, had coveted that existence of man and wanted to experience it, and therefore chose uh, the daughters of men and then took on fleshly form and then created, of course, not according to God's will, this hybrid race that was called the Nephilim. So another interesting subject matter there on its own. But anyways, when you really look at it, um, when you read the scripture that we just went through, we're known to be the vessel the, of the maker by our Christian name because we're identified or not, I'm not going to use that word identified, but we're known to be by that. So when we say God-given Christian name, the naming process goes back to God, and therefore Christ, who was there at the beginning of creation, is noted as having vested interest in us, and he laid down his life, and he became the last Adam, so he brought us back to the Genesis, back to the creation before original sin occurred, and that is truly the meaning of born again. So it's back to the Genesis, back to the beginning, as if the sin had not occurred, and therefore he excused and pardoned us. So um, in essence, if we had to make a statement, a good statement would be, I am a vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which moves and travels free of charge of all liens and encumbrances that would only be associated and attached to those who operate in legalism, which is opposite to the free grace and the gift given to us by God through his son. So we have to remember that slaves, which we are, were the creation of the creator, and he owns us, and he sent his son to purchase us. 
So us being the property of Jesus Christ, we would basically not be, by definition, persons, because slaves were not persons. And you can check that through any research you'd like, um, through some of the law dictionaries, you will see the designation. Bouvier's clearly stated that slaves were not persons. A child was not deemed to be a person uh, by the Roman civil law that we use today for civil status. So therefore, uh, when Jesus brought a child uh, and placed him on his lap, even though the apostles wanted to interfere and prevent the child from coming to him, he said, do not stop the children from coming to him. Um, he says, and he told them that they needed to humble themselves, be meek, unassuming, because without having that in their heart, in their soul, in their spirit, um, they would be haughty and proud. And so therefore, it was a humbling situation, the message of God. And that's why even Jesus showed by the washing of the feet of his disciples, his apostles, um, that they needed to be of humble uh, background. They had to be one of meek and mildness and peace. And therefore, uh, when we read the scriptures, the meek will inherit the earth. Uh, it is the uh, unassuming, the humble. And therefore, it was a humbling experience many times what Jesus was uh, doing when he was teaching not only the masses or the crowds that were coming out to hear him, but also directly his own disciples, his own apostles that were around him. So uh, when we go into, uh, even in the book Slave, and it's interesting, you know, I find it quite at times uh, concerning that the authors of these books can write certain things and then miss the overall picture themselves. Uh, in the book, uh, uh, you know, basically, uh, Slave by John MacArthur, he stated that a, a, that a slave had no legal rights. But then again, and he said that basically as a slave of Christ, um, then you wouldn't have any legal rights because you couldn't because legal is opposite to free grace which would uh be in conflict with your position with christ if you operated in a legal sense because you're in two opposite situations so you can't mingle the two you can't serve two masters so um it is exclusive ownership when it comes down uh to looking at this closely um Roman law considered slaves to be property in the absolute control of an owner. Even they saw that. So hired servants like modern employees, remember the word ploy, which is, you know, really to deceive somebody. Um, we use that word quite a bit in the hireling world. We have employees under their legal hireling names uh, could choose their masters and quit if they wanted to do so. But slaves had no choice. OK, um, in that sense, because they were owned. Now, Christ has bought us and it's whether or not we elect to accept this position because we have been given free will to choose and we need to make our election or choice sure or certain according to scripture. So you can't be on both sides. You can't be in duplicity. You can't be a living, uh, breathing spirit of Christ and be a dead body corporate in the legal persona world. And uh, so therefore the two mixed together, hot and cold, because a dead body corporate is cold. Therefore, it is part of the just ice system of legality of man's positive law. And when you mix the two together, you get now what is warm. And according to scripture, hot and cold mixed together, you'd be lukewarm and God would spit you out of his mouth. So you cannot be in duplicity. There is going to be a dividing line between the sheep and the goats. And therefore, uh, when, we, uh, when, we take, when we take the words for what they are and what we see them to be, it's very clearly written in scripture. But what happens, truth can run into what people will feel is an inconvenience when it comes down to actually 
moving forward with that elective choice. So we have free will from God because it's free. God gave us free will. His will is free. We're in his will. We are his property. And we are the beneficiaries to the trust we have in God. If we put our trust in men, we will be disappointed because we were told not to trust in them. So anything to do with legal or man's law, positive law, will lead to disappointment and failure. Uh, and therefore, um, us not following the free will as we are the beneficiaries, we are the creation of God, we are not the recreation of men or Satan and his worldly governments. Uh, the uh, the word love day shows up in Black's Law 4th. You may want to look that up just as something to check out. It says, in Old English Law, the day on which any dispute was amicably settled between neighbors or a day on which one neighbor helps another without hire. So what would that tell you? They had one day for this. They called it a love day. Well, other days, I guess, um, are love of money days, love of mammon. They would not be love of your fellow man or God because we are to owe no man anything but to love. So we're not supposed to be involved in legal indebtedness because that would violate the direction. We can read that in Romans 13. It's interesting that when you get down to that, Paul's saying, oh, no man, anything but love, but they seem to confuse the first five verses uh, into some direction uh, of uh, thought that they're supposed to be operating legally with the state. But that's not the case because we're to be subject to, not a subject of, and it's said to be subject to for conscience sake. And conscience is moral and therefore requires self-judgment and therefore would tell you that if you're in possession or claim of legal title, when you are not born with legal title, then you have assumed the property of another, and now you're an implied trustee for the benefit of the state. And they will benefit from your labor because you're not a beneficiary. So we hope we get these kind of points together. We do these short sessions because sometimes after doing the seminars, uh, the weekly seminars that we've done for quite a while now, and then having some of the weekly sessions we had aside from that, uh, people seem to lose focus somehow. Uh, the more we shared, it seemed like uh, it became uh, at a point that it was, uh, we started to lose attendance as Todd saw and I saw. And it's because right now people are making a choice. And because they don't like what they're hearing, they don't want to hear the truth. They want their ears tickled with fiction. Um, they want to have their cake and eat it too, which they can't. And that's why we spent so much time under those four sessions. So anyways, we'll leave this session for that. That was, uh, you know, great to share and uh, we'll go further. All right. Thank you, Dan.